key to the city mysteriously destroyed. Tensions rise in media metropolis as communications break down. Wait, city secretly run by lizard people? Wait, that doesn't sound right. We're here at the Metropolis Messenger, the leading news producer for Media Metropolis. Things have gone haywire after the key was destroyed. Some of these headlines make sense, but others are just wild. I'm not sure what to believe. Mia found two articles about the key to the city, but each offers a different perspective on what happened. We'll need your help to decide which is trustworthy. First, we'll explore the importance of critically evaluating the news. Then we'll apply strategies to analyze each article. Take a moment to predict in your PDF. How can we tell if a news story is trustworthy or not? Pause to brainstorm. Let's see if your predictions are correct and go get the inside scoop. We're here to learn more about the news and how to evaluate it. Responsible citizens should stay informed, and many news organizations are trustworthy. However, it's important to consume the news thoughtfully. Sometimes news is inaccurate or misleading, so we need to separate the trustworthy news from the untrustworthy. Critical news analysis means carefully examining news to determine if it's credible or believable. It's a skill you might have used before. Imagine your cousin, who sometimes fibs and really likes snacks, tells you that someone has poisoned all the cookies and he needs to take your cookies for testing. You're probably going to feel doubtful. The source of this news, your fibbing cousin, isn't trustworthy, and the content of his story is pretty unbelievable. I think he's just trying to take your cookies. Now, imagine it's your aunt, who's honest and cares about your well-being. She tells you that the cookie factory had some contaminated shipments and asks you not to eat any cookies until you know they're safe. You'll probably listen to her. She's a credible source of information, and the content of her news is reasonable. Plus, she doesn't have ulterior motives, like taking your cookies. That thinking is the same approach we'll use to analyze these two news articles that Mia found. We'll think about the source, which means the person reporting the news and the organization publishing it, and the content, which means the news story itself and the language used to deliver it. Time to apply these strategies to some news. Remember how Mia found those two conflicting articles? We need your help to decide which is more trustworthy. First, pause to read both articles in your PDF. Resume when you're ready to analyze together. Ready? Let's start. We're going to ask ourselves, is this news source and its content credible? To answer that question, we'll use ABC, Attitude Bias Crosscheck. When we evaluate attitude, we ask, is the news explained in a way that helps us understand or in a way that gets emotional reactions? When we evaluate bias, we ask, is the news showing an unfair preference for one thing over another? When we cross-check, we consider other news sources and ask, do they support this version of events? First up, attitude. A credible article will have an informative attitude and choose words focused on the audience's understanding. A less trustworthy article may approach the story with a dramatic attitude designed to stir up big emotions. Let's consider the first article. Does the language used seem informative or emotional? The headline uses phrases like shocking and bizarre. Those words are exciting, but don't help me understand the news story. Pause for a moment and underline any other phrases that seem emotional rather than informative. What else did you notice? 
Some examples I found are jaw-dropping, wild conspiracy, and bizarre plot. It seems like this article uses a lot of sensationalized language. That means phrases that are intended to cause strong emotions in the reader, like outrage or shock at the expense of accuracy. That's a sign of a less credible attitude. So already, I'm not sure if I trust this news article. Now, let's move on to evaluate it for bias. Bias means an unfair preference for one thing over another. For example, your friend might say her cat is the cutest cat in the world. Is that true? Probably not, but your friend is biased because she loves her own cat. It's natural to have biases. However, when we're consuming news, we want to be aware of any biases in the source and content so we can form our own opinions. Let's check the first article for biased language. It accuses the mayor of being in a conspiracy or a secret plan. Is that reporting based on facts or bias based on rumors? It seems like bias. Pause to look for more bias language and resume when you're ready. What did you notice? It mentions rumors, eyewitnesses, and some people blaming the mayor but doesn't offer proof or name specific people. What do you think? I'm pretty sure this reporting is biased. Maybe the mayor is responsible, but this article doesn't offer proof, just rumors. So far, this article has a sensationalized attitude and shows bias. Let's dig deeper with the third step of ABC, cross-check. That means we check a different source for the same topic and compare their reporting. That helps us understand the whole story, not just one perspective. Right now, we'll use our second article. First, we'll evaluate it for attitude and bias, and then we'll cross-check and compare the two articles to get the whole picture of what happened to the key to the city. Take a moment to evaluate this article's attitude and possible bias. Does it explain the news in an informative way or sensationalized way? Does it demonstrate an unfair preference? Pause to read and reflect and resume when you're ready. So, what did you notice? Let's compare. This article's attitude seems informative. While the first article used sensationalized language, this one offers information, like the fact that City Hall had a leaky roof. I also don't think this article is biased. The first article accused the mayor without any proof. This one mentions a theory about a leaky roof, but uses words like might, could, and potentially to inform the reader that these aren't definite facts. Based on our analysis, which article do you think is more credible? I'm finding article two more believable. Now let's cross check. What information in the two articles is the same and what differs? Pause to fill out the chart in your PDF, then resume when you're ready. Let's see. Both articles agree that the key was destroyed two weeks ago and that a power outage happened at the same time. We can trust those facts. The first, less credible article says there are rumors the mayor destroyed the key on purpose using the power outage as a cover. The second, more credible article says there was a leak in City Hall's roof that could have caused the power outage and that the city's investigating what happened. Both articles cover the same news story, but they offer conflicting information. Since we determined article two was more credible based on attitude and bias, that version of events is likely the most reliable. That doesn't mean we have to ignore article one. We can keep it in mind while we learn more, but we shouldn't trust it just yet. We got the scoop on the key to the city and also how to evaluate news. That's just what Media Metropolis needs to start working together again. Mia's processing everything we learned so she can begin compiling a new key to the city. 
Over the next few days, you'll explore news analysis in your PDF to add more information to our new key. When you've finished, we'll meet up at Metromax Marketing to dive into the world of advertising. Until then, remember, every story is a new horizon. See you next time. Hey, hey.